one of the people uh, I, I've, I've been fortunate to make some really good friends in life and, uh, and some of them, you know, uh, f come from a, a direction you just wouldn't think. So um, one of those friends of, of mine, that a very cherished friendship that I have is, is with Billy Cobham. Mm. And, uh, and, and it has zero to do with drums. Absolutely zero. Mm -hmm. you know, growing up, was I a fan of the Mahavishnu Orchestra, et cetera, et cetera? Absolutely. But yeah. I was in Los Angeles and my friend Jim Firmston said to me, hey, Mitch, I'm going down to the club today. I don't know if you knew this, but the Cobb man is a big is a big squash player. And, you know, why don't you come down and we'll play? I'm a big time squash player. I, I, it's, oh, I cool. love playing. So, you know, I, we, I go down to the L.A. Athletic Club and and uh, and, and there's Billy. And uh, and I'm thinking, wow, this is this is, you know, it's Billy Cobb, one of my heroes. But we get on the squash court and and uh, and there's there's no talk. Billy and I have spent probably, you know, over the years, you know, 80 hours in each other's presence. Right. Uh, and, and I think we've probably talked drums about 10 minutes in. in, in <laughs> totally. In yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, it's all about the, the human being. But yep. one of the things that we did talk about was something that we've kind of touched on already. And that's that when you're on a squash court and you're, and you're, you're playing and in your mind, you are the athletes you that, that are worthy of everything that the Greeks thought you should be. If you put a camera outside and, and you watch what you, what you actually look like, yeah. it, it's like watching a bunch of gibbons yeah. run, run, run around the court. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and you, you come off court and you have this this idea of, of you know, oh, I, I look like this or I look like that or I look like the athletes, I look like the professionals. And you get back and, and you watch it and, and you you cry. And you, yeah. you say, oh, I'm never going to get on a squash court again. And, 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 and the same thing comes from when you go into a studio, you, you play, you know, you, you, you play your thing. You, you play the, the 18 licks that you really know. Then you yeah. play the other 18 that you think you know, and then you try for the other ones. But you listen back to it, and, and, and you say to yourself, you know, what was I thinking? What, where where <laughs> was I going? Yeah. Because you know, that's certainly not what I was listening to in my head. Yeah. And I, I take both those experiences, and because I it's, the theme has come up a few times in the conversations that we've had. Um, and, you know, and I look at those things, and I say, at, at what point are, are we using this information to get better. Um, right. mm -hmm. And I don't mean, to, I don't mean to say to get better in terms of where someone comes along and says, Hey, you're a really good drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, no. How are we using these situations to get better in order to develop a vocabulary so we can express ourselves better as, mm -hmm. as musicians? Mm 